That is your rifle. Do not lose it. Stanger. Rifle number yep. one three four one three. That is your rifle. Do not lose it. Scott Truman teaches high school history in British Columbia. His great uncle Jack, from Dragon Lake, British Columbia, was one of six brothers who went off to war. It totally stunned me that so many of my great uncles went off to do this. I remember reading one of their letters, and they said that there was two sides of life as a soldier. One was very monotonous and boring, and you're waiting uh, for someone to attack, but at the same time, you're not sure if you want them to. Two. You again. Bend your left elbow more. Keep going. Keep going. Patrice Blais' grandfather Stop. was Ernest Lamarche. He fought with the Royal 22nd Regiment, the famous Van Dues. Like Patrice, the Van Dues were a minority, the only French speaking regiment in a five million strong British army. Hand like that. Right Patrice is determined to do the memory of his grandfather proud, but he's not a natural soldier. Ce voyage, c'est euh, pratiquement un, un pèlerinage familial. Euh, enfin, qu'on pourrait dire, savoir que enfin, mon grand-père, Ernest Lamarche, a, a pris le même chemin qu'on prend 90 ans plus tard. C'est comme si tous les gens, les, les soldats qui étaient dans la guerre, ils sont comme parmi nous, puis il y en a qui nous regardent encore. Lift it, lift it, lift it, stop. Some of you are perfect, some less so. Push it up onto the shoulder. That's better. Slope arms, but... Like many of their grandparents, the Canadians feel they are being treated as colonial cannon fodder. As it comes down like that. No, that wasn't very good. They That's grind their teeth and try hard to keep insubordination under there. control. Don't move it until I tell you to. Squad three. Don't change your hands. But we're being almost far too respectful. We didn't have a reputation as terribly respectful. No. I remember my great great grandfather in his book, he would say that when generals oh, would come by and go on. after they would kind of, you know, laugh at them a bit. Out of the moment. When you take them off. I would never do that. <laughs> Stephen Murray's parents moved to the US and Murray grew up not knowing a lot about his great-grandfather, Will Byrd, one of the Great War's great characters. Byrd kept a secret journal of the war. It was forbidden. Byrd kept one anyway. The majority of these stories, even though they're very terrible, there's a lot of very funny moments throughout this entire book. And I just don't understand from reading these stories how, he's still, how he was still alive after the, the hell that he went through. It was all so very Canadian. Humor to keep the horror at bay. So this is one of the... Uh, Kate Sarsfield has come to Oxford to piece together the story of her family's hero, Talbot Papineau. From his college. Here at Oxford University, before the war, he was one of Canada's first Rhodes Scholars. Papineau is a canoeist, a lawyer, a hockey player, a citizen soldier who dreamed of becoming Prime Minister one day. His mother, Caroline, was a descendant of one of the signers of the U.S. Declaration of Independence. And his father was the grandson of Louis Joseph Papineau, who led the Lower Canada Rebellion. He was bilingual, fluent in French and English. My mom just told me that he was really active on the rowing team. She showed me a couple of pictures when he was on the water, but oh, really? yeah. yeah. It was nice. Well, that, that hasn't Graduate student Michael Talbot knows the Papineau story well, especially Papineau's role making hockey history leading the Oxford Canadians. 
Talbot's role in that was to help found the team, because he yeah. was on the first team. And what's particularly noteworthy is that they're wearing the Canadian Maple Leaf, it's red. Yeah. And this is the first Team Canada. They were the first European champions, and they were seen in Europe as representative of Canada. I am, before all, a Canadian. I want to see a Canadian pride based on substantial achievements and not on some supercilious sense of self-satisfaction we have borrowed from England. One of the interesting things is that they agreed that they'd have a dinner where they'd all get back together again every five years. Unfortunately, when they agreed to do this, the first dinner was scheduled for 1916. And by that time, of course, they were all pretty much signed up and, and at war, and, and, and of course, several of them were dead by then. Right, left, right, left, right, left. The two may march at ease. Sling your rifles over your right shoulder. Taff Gillingham's great uncle led these very same drills left, 90 years ago. Left, His great uncle right, had moved left, to Canada and left, joined the Canadian right, Army when war left, broke out. Right, left. His name is among the fallen, inscribed on the Vimy Memorial. To their amazement, the Canadians are arriving to train beside the ancient ruins of Stonehenge. War historian Lieutenant Colonel Roman Yaramovitz brings them back to 1914. This is a large plain. In fact, it's the biggest training area in England. Your ancestors came here quite keen to train, and they arrived to a tent city, probably right over there. And things looked wonderful. Papineau's first letters home reflect how the army of Canadian volunteers is not finding the soldier business as easy as it looks. Good morning, gentlemen. Now listen in. We have here a new company officer, Captain Papineau. He will now be taking you for your morning drill session. Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal! Very good. I seem to get along well with the men, but I make a good many mistakes in drill, which is most annoying. Right turn! Left turn! Left turn! Somebody at ease! The other day, I tied my platoon all up and had an awful time getting it straightened out. Right turn! Left turn! Left turn! Come on! Move it! The sun was shining, golden afternoons, warm, sweet grass, the smell of hay. How romantic can you get? And then it rained, and it wouldn't stop raining. The sucking mud sticking to everything that you touch. And there's no place to dry your clothes, and there's nothing quite as horrible as the smell of wet wool. And you get pretty depressed. Great victories are coming from the front, and you're not there. You're doing important things like dying in Salisbury from pneumonia. We're losing eight men a day. Stephen Murray is great-grandfather, Nova Scotia's Will Bird, fights with Montreal's Black Watch, the Royal Highlanders of Canada. With the camp overflowing, Bird and his mates are housed in stables. There's a friend of his who gets this terrible cold, vomiting through the night, you know, not being able to sleep, and they call for a doctor. They want an ambulance to come and take him out. It doesn't come until the next afternoon. The guy ends up dying in the morning. So Bird's good friend Christensen is very angered by this. So he writes this very angry letter to the young man's parents saying, this is how he died, this is why he died. And the letter never made it because the army stopped it. 